We are happy to have you into this edition of LCPioneers.com live, presented by PioStream, as we try to keep you connected to the Lewis and Clark Athletics community during this time of remote classes, staff working remotely, trying to figure everything out as we uh, continue to wish you uh, the safest and uh, best possible scenarios as everyone uh, nationwide, worldwide, dealing with coronavirus and COVID-19. Uh, the goal, as we welcome you in, is to keep you connected to the Lewis and Clark Athletics community with conversations from student athletes, coaches, administrators, everyone who makes uh, everything work for Lewis and Clark Athletics. We want to try to keep you connected to them, talk to them about their stories and how they're adjusting to uh, hopefully a very temporary uh, but current reality that we're dealing with with all the changes that are going on uh, throughout the country and the world. I am Ryan Goff. I'm the play-by-play -play voice and director of athletic communications for Lewis and Clark Athletics. Uh, we are located in Portland, Oregon, and we're a member of the NCAA Division III world competing in the Northwest Conference. So Lewis and Clark competes with schools throughout Northwest Oregon and throughout the state of Washington in the Northwest Conference, as well as other D3 schools and institutions at other levels uh, throughout the entire Northwest and even uh, nationwide. You know, we have two exciting guests that are coming on with us today. Mel Ho Omanavanui of Lewis and Clark Football, Kayla Valdez of Lewis and Clark Volleyball. And even a couple years ago, I mean, Kayla and her team traveled to Washington, D.C., played in a tournament out on the East Coast. So kind of a good example of the opportunities that Lewis and Clark student athletes get uh, to explore uh, the country. And then even Lewis and Clark students in general opportunities to travel uh, worldwide, too, with the overseas study program. Um, really cool stuff that we'll talk about more in just a moment on how you can stay connected with the Lewis and Clark campus should you have never visited before. Maybe you're considering Lewis and Clark uh, to be one of your destinations to compete in collegiate athletics, or maybe that's just going to be where you're going to be going to school as a member of the student body. Uh, we'll share more how you can stay connected during this time of everyone working remotely. I uh, invite you to connect with us on Twitter and Instagram at LC Pioneers. We just posted a new post yesterday. It's an Instagram TV video talking about why Lewis and Clark has a Newfoundland dog as its mascot. It's something that's uh, probably about 12, 13 years old at this point. The reason behind that, uh, we posted a video talking about Buddy, uh, our late but original Pio uh, Newfoundland dog mascot, uh, when he was inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2018. So be sure to check that out on our Instagram. You can comment in the Facebook Live comments below. Good to see Coach Hayes joining us. Uh, Edgar Garcia, how are you doing as well? You can ask us questions down there for either Kayla, Mel, or myself. And also email work sports at lclark. Edu. I do want to invite you to check out lcpioneers.com. That's the place to stay connected and see a campus tour. If you haven't already, uh, our coaches from cross country and volleyball did a great job putting together uh, a cool campus tour. It's a time-lapse video. The entire thing took them 90 minutes to shoot live on Facebook, and then they condensed it down to a six-minute tour. You can see our graduate campus. You can see our law school campus in addition to the undergraduate campus the facilities at Lewis and Clark, that's right there on the front page. And then as we continue to have more guests on lcpioneers.com live, you can see past episodes. We have our conversation yesterday with Maddie Lee, who's an alumnus from the softball program, class of 2015. We talked to her yesterday as she's now an MDA beat writer for the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Oklahoma newspaper. That conversation's there now and links to our past conversations as well. Also invite you to go to lcpioneers.com slash YLC, W-H-Y-L-C, and you can get to the Lewis and Clark College virtual visit page. You can see different things that are going on there, including information sessions that they're holding on Instagram. It was neat to see Sabrina Murray, who's a junior for the Lewis and Clark swimming program on Instagram yesterday, talking with an admissions counselor and kind of keeping people in tune with what's going on. Uh, with Lewis and Clark and those interested in possibly joining us on Palatine Hill, the beautiful campus, just six miles north, uh, southwest rather, of uh, downtown Portland, Oregon. Uh, but let's get to our guests, uh, Kayla Valdez, Mel Ho Omanavanui. They are two Lewis and Clark student athletes. And the reason we're having them on is because last weekend was supposed to be the annual Hawaii Club Luau. And while it didn't happen, the planning certainly was happening. The work that these students put into producing what is probably a top five, if not the top event. In fact, Sabrina Murray talked about this yesterday. What are some of your favorite events on campus? And she said the luau is something that she absolutely enjoys. And she was disappointed that she couldn't have that uh, this past year. So let's bring them in. Mel and Kayla, both from Hawaii, joining us at 830 
local time uh, on the heels of classes. Uh, Kayla, let's start with you. I know you said you had a 6 a.m. class today, which I remember when I was in college, you know, frustrations about having the 8 a.m. classes. Uh, how have you adjusted to, to being uh, back home and, and getting used to those earlier times? Um, it's definitely um, been hard uh, to adapt to the time difference, but um, our professors have been really supportive in adjusting to the people who have that time zone difference. So um, I guess just being able to support us during this tough time and understanding and um, adjusting the, the workload has definitely been a great help for me um, from this transition. Uh, Mel, uh, same question for you. I mean, everyone uh, heads home kind of in this uh, mad dash and, and now you're taking classes earlier, adjusting to, to new times. What's the transition been like for you? Actually, I'm still in Oregon right now, so that um, I uh, the time zone I haven't had really to adjust to. Um, and my earliest class is about 10 o'clock, so um, I'm not really having to adjust the time. It's just kind of um, making adjustment adjustments in my daily plan. Um, Got to um, take time management a lot more seriously um, since we're just at home. It's really easy to be lazy and not go to class or not do the stuff you need to do. But um, I think that's been the biggest adjustment for me so far. Well, that's great that you're still in, in Oregon and, and not yeah. having to make necessarily the extra time adjustment. We were talking to some students yesterday and, and that is a real thing. I mean, it's, it's affected me too. Just trying to get a new routine where you're not on campus and finding uh, that motivation can be difficult. Uh, Mel, you're a physics major. What is it that, um, you've liked about your major as you've moved into your upperclassmen years, uh, specific classes that maybe have really stood out for you? Um, one thing I really like about being a physics major is that we're, um, we have a pretty small class, I think. Um, there's no more than 15 people in my, uh, in my class right now um, that's physics majors. And I think, like, um, because we all take classes together, I think creating, like, those relationships and, uh, like, friendships from class, I think, is really important. And um, that's a really good thing about Lewis and Clark, where the class sizes are a lot smaller. You get to know your classmates and your professors a lot better. So I think that's one thing I take away from being a physics major. Kayla, you're a, an economics major. Uh, when you think about some of the highlights from that path and what you want to do, what stood out to you? Um, I think uh, insurance and definitely um, real estate comes to mind when I think about that. Um, just like Mel mentioned, um, I think the relationships that we build in the higher level classes, struggling together with all the tests and homework that we have to go through is a great encouragement to push through through hard um, majors such as physics and economics. So just having those people along with you makes everything um, worth it. Kayla Valdez, Mel Holtman-Mel. Ho Omanavanui joining us on lcpioneers.com live. Again, you can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at LC Pioneers. The reason I wanted to have you on is because of the Hawaii Club Luau, which is not, is not something I've been able to attend. Every single year, I grab my calendar. I try to figure out if I'm going to be able to go based on the game schedules that we have and some of the events that are going on. And I have been told firsthand that this is something that I'm absolutely missing out on. Uh, Kayla, what's the planning like to get this event off the ground? How early do you start? Kind of walk us through the process from start to finish each year. Yeah, so we actually meet as a Luau committee before we go on to Christmas break. So this kind of involves um, the president of Hawaii Club, who is Carly Wayne. Um, she's a senior, um, and then most of us are the choreographers and just some people who kind of want to help out during um, luau and so I believe the practices don't usually start until the first week of, of February and that's when we kind of choose the times that we want and the places where we want to meet for our practices 
And then from there, it's kind of an ongoing practice every week. Um, we kind of meet on our own selves for the Luau committee. It's not really a formal thing. Um, we order all the uh, costumes and all that before Luau, such as like delays and everything else that goes into the planning of it. And then the week of Luau, I think, is the most stressful and craziest for us. Um, we have practice, I believe, every day. And then starting on that Thursday, we have the gym being set up and then we're able to use it. And then Friday, we have a full dress rehearsal with the live musicians that we um, asked to come and play for us. And then Saturday, we also meet once it, um, before the luau actually starts in the morning just to do a quick run through of the program and to make sure everyone is um, on the same page for that event ready to happen that night. Uh, Mel, she talked about choreography. Um, curious, you know, how you got started with Hula and why uh, this is an event that you like to, to be a choreographer for. Well, I was first introduced to Hula when I was in seventh grade. Um, I, it was an elective and I, I was able to choose between band, orchestra, choir, and then Hula. And because... I'm majority Hawaiian, um, majority of Hawaiian descent. I wanted to learn more about my culture. So starting from seventh grade all the way through senior year of high school, I um, I took hula and I, I loved it. So when I first came to Lewis and Clark my freshman year, um, they didn't have a, um, a choreographer for men's, for the men's dance in the, um, for luau. So the president at the time, Alex Navarro, she asked if I wanted to be the choreographer for men's, and I said, yeah, as a freshman, I was I was happy to do it. So freshman year, I think we only had maybe like six guys, all from Hawaii, and then throughout the years, it's like more and more and more. For this year, we had 17 or 16 guys in, uh, in our men's dance, and the best part is about half of them are, are kids not from Hawaii and that's the part I really enjoy is um, kind of spreading and teaching our culture to, uh, to people who aren't really familiar with it and that's the best part about being a choreographer. Uh, and Kayla, uh, the Lewis and Clark volleyball team told me that this is something that I should dance in in the future. <laughs> I know that you do have a lot of folks from, from faculty and staff who participate. What's that like in terms of kind of building on those relationships that you do establish with coaches, professors, and staff members at Lewis and Clark? Yeah, so I haven't been, um, I haven't taught the faculty dance, but in my previous years with Luau, um, Cassie Komitani and Kristlin um, usually take on those head roles of choreographing the staff dance. And I mean, those relationships that you build with professors kind of last until you graduate um, Lewis and Clark. So, I mean, it was really disappointing that I don't think we were going to have a faculty dance this year because the lack of um, professors and faculty that we were going to have. So, Ryan, if you joined, maybe we could have had one this year. Um, yeah, but, I mean, it's really interesting to see them um, learn about the cultures just as um, students who aren't familiar with it. Um be able to express it on that event. Kayla Valdez and Mel Ho'omanavanui joining us on lcpioneers.com live. Uh, we talked to coaches, student athletes, alumni, try to keep you connected with Lewis and Clark Athletics while everyone is off campus uh, for quarantine, isolation, and, and the like. Uh, Kayla, as you think back to this upcoming year's events, what would have happened last weekend? If there is one thing that really is the biggest bummer, uh, what stands out for you that, that we don't get to see this year at Luau? Um, well, last year I choreographed the Kahiko dance. So that's more of the traditional um, hula that um, we celebrate in the culture. And this year we would have had a combined women and men Kahiko dance, which both me and Mel choreographed ourselves. And, you know, this was a really looking forward to dance just because we had like an entrance dance also called um, or 
the entrance and exit dance, including the main dance, which usually happens like in hula competitions. Like we actually captured the whole entire thing, and we actually finished it before um, we head out to spring break. And we were looking forward to the most because a lot of the costumes that were going into it spent most of our budget and you know, having a lot of people join into that and condensing it to make it look um, really good for Luau. Mel, uh, I she was talking about practice, and I recall seeing uh, people rehearsing in Howard as I was leaving the office some nights at, I thought it was like as late as nine, but even in like the seven o'clock hour, and it kind of shows that, that depth of the student athlete experience and the student experience at Lewis and Clark, you know, uh, that'd be on the heels of maybe practice, or if you were still doing spring football, you know, they'd be on the heels of that. Uh, describe the dedication and the commitment that you get from classmates, teammates, uh, to try to pull this off. Um, I couldn't express my like gratification and like thankfulness for everybody who was involved. Um, I'm. Some days we had practice starting around like five and we would end at nine. Like sometimes me and Kayla would meet up early to to like to make a dance, to chore uh, to choreograph a dance from maybe from five to six and then from six to seven we teach one dance and then from seven to eight we teach another one and eight to nine there's another one. And I, I was just really thankful for all the everybody involved who was so um uh kind of determined to make this Luau the best. And I think, like, going off on what Kayla was saying about what's maybe the most bumming part, too, is um, I think everybody was confident that this year was going to be the best year. I mean, starting from our president, Carly, um, all the time and effort that she put into this show, we all believed that this was going to be the best one yet. And I think that was the most disappointing part was um, all the time and effort that we put into it. Um, we finished most dances before spring break, which has never been done before. Normally, we, we're still going. We got a head start this year. Started early. Everything was going well. And then, unfortunately, things happen. But, um, yeah, I think that's going to be a, a big bummer. Well, I can assure you that it's not overlooked because I hear from tons of people about the amount of effort that you guys put in for Luau at a Hawaii club. So uh, we are sad that we don't get to see it this year. We are looking forward to hopefully getting back to normal as soon as possible and experiencing the 2021 Luau. Hopefully it'll be better than ever. Uh, you both are planning to return uh, to Lewis and Clark, uh, upperclassmen years, senior seasons uh for both of you in football and, and volleyball uh kayla if you can keep us in the loop you know how have you been staying in touch with teammates you know how have you been trying to get what would have maybe been a replacement for uh spring volleyball you know in with all the chaos that's been happening what's been some of the best ways to stay in touch with teammates um you know our head coach emily hayes um shout out to her i think she's listening right now but she does almost everything to keep this team together, um, especially in this sort of time where we would have been together in the gym. Um, right now it's like film analysis where we meet with our position groups and then we'll be able to go over it as a team um, together with the different position groups, with the back row, the front row, and you know, just being able to be together during this time where we should have been and also um, we also have a group chat, so we're constantly talking every day with each other, including our 2020 um, commitments. So it's like we already started our fall um, season together as a team, and it's great because we get to know um, the incoming freshmen, and we get to establish more relationships with people that we don't really talk to on the team and to build that chemistry so that when we come on the court for this fall, we're ready to go. Uh, volleyball's had some pretty strong success in the first few years with Coach Hayes leading the program. Football, you had your best season, Mel, uh, in a significant number of years with a four and five year this season. Uh, same question to you. How do you stay in touch with teammates and make sure that 
uh, should everything return to normal for the fall, you guys are ready to build. Um, one thing that I think has been really helpful this year or this off season, especially during this time, is that um, Coach Losi and Coach Bushman they, um, I guess so. Over the years, we've had a leadership council, which is uh, consisted of two or three players from each position, and um, we all meet as kind of like leaders of the team and we talk to the coaches. But this year we've done something different where we've been meeting every Sunday from six to seven. Um, so before the whole coronavirus situation, we're meeting at school from six to seven and we're, we talk for an hour, hour and a half about how we can become better leaders and um, how we can, how it applies to our individual groups. So now we do this over Google Hangout and it's been it's been good to keep in touch with everybody, and then we take whatever we learn from those sessions, and we uh, talk to our individual groups about it. So for me, I'm I'm in touch with the linebackers, and um, I mean it's been tough, but we just been sending each other encouragement and just trying to keep pushing each other when it's really easy to to uh, not work out or something. We've been really um, kind of challenging each other to hold each other accountable. It's almost like the off season started early, but uh, certainly appreciate you uh, helping us uh, keep everyone in the loop. What's going on with you, Kayla, especially again, with the three hour time difference uh, is staying in touch with us as well. Melho Omanavanui, Kayla Valdez of football and volleyball. Uh, thanks for your time and joining us on lcpioneers.com live. Thank thanks you. A lot of fun to talk to them and to hear how everything is going with uh, football, volleyball, trying to keep everyone fresh and ready to go uh, for the upcoming seasons. And um, as tough as it's been to not have spring sports and, and even speaking on a very personal level, I miss games tremendously. I miss our student athletes tremendously. That's the toughest part of not being on campus and getting to see all the hard work that they put in competitively pay off on the field. Um, I certainly uh, am hopeful that this is the only season that we will have lost uh, because if we get into the fall and there's still no sports, it'll be really, really tough. Uh, I think I'm not speaking alone on that for sure. So uh, great to hear that they're still making preparations and getting ready for the upcoming season. Uh, on the heels of that, as we, we think about um, what's going on with Lewis and Clark Athletics and, and the preparations that it takes to be um, great and ready to go, our guest tomorrow is going to be an outstanding person to speak to that. She's Morgan Taylor of Lewis and Clark track and field, because uh, this would have been the last weekend of preparation for her before she competed at the Northwest conference championships in the heptathlon. And she too, uh, much like Mel senior season um, and, and the opportunity to really uh, have all of her hard work pay off in the second year, working with uh, head coach, Aaron Campbell, he was the interim last year. So really a, a good chance to see how much she had grown in that, in that event. And so can't wait to hear about how she's coping with the fact she doesn't get to compete this year. If there's any thought to trying to extend her eligibility and compete next year, um, we'll talk to more, uh, her about that tomorrow during lcpioneers.com live. Uh, we have had some pretty fun guests this week with Mel and Kayla today. And then yesterday with Maddie Lee, a softball on this last uh, Tuesday, two days ago, we talked to Rocky Campbell, who's a former Lewis and Clark student athlete in tennis, now an assistant coach with the program, but also the career center director. And he kind of gave us insight on how the career center is helping students, especially seniors and upperclassmen uh, with internships and career connections, even though no one is on campus. Well, he will be talking to Emily Hayes, Kayla Valdez's head coach of the volleyball program on her coffee chat coming up at 12 noon. You can go to LC Pios VB on social media to try to connect with that conversation as well. Uh, we'll have updates on our guests uh, coming up next week. We'll have Morgan Taylor tomorrow and then next week. We're really gonna celebrate D3 week, which is a nationwide effort to talk about what NCAA Division Three student athletes go through to prepare and focus in on uh, making them the be best selves that they can. And for Lewis and Clark specifically, our building champions philosophy and the idea of creating champions in the classroom competition character and the community. Edgar, I don't know, this is a Facebook Live comment, I don't know how old the phrase roll piles is. He said the use is a go piles, which completely understand. I do know that my first association with Lewis and Clark started a decade ago, and that was already there. The roll piles mantra was there, or at least starting. So it could have been around that time 
of the new logo, uh, which was unveiled around 2008 or so. So uh, if you go to our Instagram page, you can read or watch a video rather of how Buddy came to be the first Pio, a Newfoundland dog mascot. And that might've been this, about the same time that that role Pios uh, came to be. So until we talk to you again tomorrow with Morgan Taylor of Track and Field, big thanks to Melho Omanavanui and Kayla Valdez for joining us on Facebook and our lcpioneers.com live show. Thursday through Friday, 1130 in the morning, we will have another show tomorrow. And until then, I'm Ryan Goff. Uh, thanks for having fun. We'll talk to you again soon for more lcpioneers.com live on PioStream. Goodbye, everybody. Casey Jones. I'm, I'm Ann Bentley. I'm an associate uh, professor of, of chemistry. General and this chemistry, research group, organic chemistry. I supervise the two students working in the Rogers classes, program this summer. And I have a research lab. lab. Brown bag experience is a good chance for students to get experience um, presenting their the work that they've done in the lab. Especially to an audience that's not way to get really What's deeply about involved the Brown in experience the science is it that is incorporates here all of and the Rogers program. To, so um, start to define what might be what you department and what research they're doing. But it also gives us the opportunity to share our research with the greater science community. And show the context and the application of what they're doing. The summer program is really beneficial for getting opportunity in research. It's interesting to be able to communicate to other scientists what your work is, and it forces you to learn how to talk about your subject the same so that not so only nice experts in your field can understand it, but others can understand it as well, which I just believe is a good life skill. Which looks to really talk good about your research in a way that anybody can understand it really is a valuable the experience a lot and during something the summer, you don't get a lot of practice for in the except in this context. Because oftentimes they just their own ideas for what classroom filled with people who interpret their data. Basically the same things that you do, but in a brown bag, you have to be able to explain and and provide motivation for everything that you're working on and why it's important and why it's relevant to be studying.